Chaitanya. So we have seen how to create material, how to create our um, prices, promotions. We have planned the promotions. Okay. All those things have to be sent to the POS because in retail, all the transactions happen at the POS level, not at the SAP level. Okay. So the POS system may be sitting, sitting somewhere uh, remotely than that the SAP server actually is. And the POS system still have their own capabilities. So we have to send the data, whatever we have created in SAP, to the POS system. To see the POS activities or to access the POS related transaction codes, there is a separate menu called WPOS. The POS will tell you like uh, what are the transaction codes you can use to trigger the outbound communications to the POS and receive the inbound communications from the POS. And since this is a test uh, training system, you won't be having, uh, we are not having any um, proper POS installed so that we can trigger the transactions there and see how it is affecting SAP. Instead, we are going to use the simulation functionality to see how things are getting done in SAP. Okay. So let us start with the outbound activities. So what is the outbound activity from SAP? From SAP, the data should go to the POS system. In the other words, you have to trigger the data from SAP to the external system. So all we can do is that like we can trigger the data and see. Okay. So when you have created a lot of data and uh, you are doing it for the very first time, you will be initializing it. Okay. So the initialization will contain all the data which you have created. So because of which the data will be voluminous when compared to the delta. Okay. So delta is you are going to send the data which are newly created and which are updated the number. But when you are initializing, you will be sending everything. Okay, so let us assume that I have uh, 100,000 materials. Okay, so when I initialize or when I move from, when I migrate from my normal SAP to, oh, sorry, when I migrate from the legacy system to SAP system, first I will be triggering all those 1,000, oh, sorry, 100,000 data. Okay, so that is the initialization. So once you initialize, based on your um, what to say, your partner profile and the message type, it will be taken to the appropriate port. Okay. So here you could see that it's saying the data are written in the file target. And we'll see what is there in the IROC. 259197 slash OW is 02. So current status is. You are the system. Okay. So it is for this material 10026. Okay. And we'll see why it failed. Error triggering media subsystem. Okay. Since we had done this initialization many times earlier, so the job got finished immediately. Okay. But in case of for running for the first time, that will run for hours together. Sometimes you might want to send only the 
selected data to the selected stores. Initialization sends everything, whereas your uh, selected data, let me say that I want to send a couple of materials to the store W303. Okay. Uh, I want to transfer article data 100, 100. No messages needed because these messages are already created and triggered. So what you can do is like you can create a new material and then you try to trigger it. You will be able to see the message that it has been triggered something. Okay. This is the change message. You have created the material you have initialized, which means you had sent the data to the UI system and everything. Okay. Then you are changing some materials. Okay. The changes could be either the description changes or the price changes or any field changes. Okay. And you want to send only those materials alone because uh, let us say like out of 100,000 materials, there are 1,000 materials, let us say, 1,000 materials that have been changed. So, instead of sending those 100,000 materials, it is better to have the system to send only those 1,000 materials because the other 99,000 are going to be a redundant data even if you trigger it. Okay. So, that is the reason we have the option to pick the messages, that is the change message. So, whenever you make any changes, the data are updated in the wind table. Okay. WI in the wind table. So, based on the entries that are present in the wind table, the change messages are going to be created and triggered to the outbound system. So, you send not only this article data, you might want to create the assortment list. If you remember what an assortment list is like, you have created the article. In the article master, basic data, you have the assortment list profile. So, all the materials that has the particular list profile, and that will be collected in one list, and that will be sent to the store. So, here also you can use, so basically the assortment list says like, this is the store and these are all the articles contained in this assortment, which means these are all the materials that can be handled in a particular store. Okay. So, that is the reason, uh, like you are getting the error message saying that material not listed in so and so site or material not created. Okay. So, that is because of that. Okay. So, when you have the listing done and sent to the store, that is the POS, the POS will identify, okay, these are all the materials we are allowed to sell or entitled to sell. Okay. So, the data is going to be huge, especially when you have huge number of articles and huge number of stores. Okay. So, that is the reason the initialization will be a, uh, what is will be a, uh, highly memory consuming or intense uh, process, but once that is done, the subsequent versions of assessment list can be changed, sent in the, through the change messages or through the manual selection when you want to send to the selected source and the selected materials. So, here I am going to say that W001. W2, W100, send of assessment type L, article. So, I am just picking up all the articles that belong to that particular, uh, that are contained in the particular list. Okay. Sometimes, if you feel like no certain articles have been missed out, then you you can select that triggering. Instead of assessment list, you can create by means of the articles. Okay, so here it says and this is the IDAP that has been created. So let me see slash form to be zero to so the data has reached to the port. That's it. So this many materials are going to be sent.
So it's in details like what is the weight. What is the article number? What is the merchandise category? And the material type is the merchandise category. Listed from and to date. Okay. And this is the unit of measure. This is the validity date. Or listed date. This is what the listed date is. And this is the text for the material. This is the purchasing data. That is the UI is known as the purchasing group. ND is the planning type. No planning. Then what else we have? The assessment is. So this list is triggered. I mean this site is a part of WWSTR group. All of them can be consolidated with you. It's one zero zero three six zero one seven is the material number. This is the so one three six zero one seven is the variant number, and this is the number of that generic number three six. Okay, so this is what is contained in the assortment list B B D L D. So we have let we have triggered the materials, okay. and the data has also reached the port. So based on the if the interfaces are proper, then these data the the details of data will automatically reach to the POS system. Okay. So that is what basically we have to see in the outbound part because we get the data, we send them to the store. Okay. Whereas in inbound, this is a test system, a standalone system. So we don't have any provision to do the transaction in external POS and receive them in the our system. But we have to see how the things are going on. Okay. So for that, we have an option to simulate. Okay. So there are options to simulate the Sales activity, financial transactions. Okay, this is the sales part. Financial transaction is for the billing part, and goods movement is to update the, the what to say stock movement and store order. Whenever the store requires some material, they want to create the store orders, uh, stock transfer orders, which will be consolidated and honored by the distribution center. So you, the store need not have a SAP system to carry out this request. They can do it this from their PY system itself, which data when it comes to SAP, it will be converted into a uh, start transfer order and then processed as usual. Okay. Then you have the physical inventory. This physical inventory is for your inventory valuation. Basically, when you are carrying out the revaluation activities and other things, you will be able to um, use this simulation functionality. This is the master data. Sometimes you make any changes. The, data, the communication of master data is not, need not be one way always. So whatever changes you make in HSP will be available in TOS, not the other way around. Okay? It need not be that way. Sometimes you might want to make any changes in the master data in the TOS system that should come and update your SAP system. It could be either the descriptions or any field changes, or sometimes even the price. Okay. Any data you make in the uh, master data, um, any changes you make in the master data in the PY system, that should be interfaced into the SAP, and you can see how it is performing in the simulation mode. Okay. So let us start with the sales activity, WPUK. You have few options. One is sales as per receipts. Sales, aggregated sales. Okay. Uh, means of payment and cashier statistics. Okay, you will see sales as per receipts and the aggregated sales. Sales as per receipts. The name itself says like, so let us say in the POS on the particular day, 
uh, if 100 transactions are happened, uh, now you have to decide how those 100 transactions have to be updated in SAP. Okay. You might want to create 100 individual transactions. Uh, I mean, 100, okay, let us when I say individual transactions, 100 lines. Okay, when you say like, no, I want to update all these 100 lines individually in SAP so that if there is any audit or value, uh, tomorrow if there is any validation that needs to take place at the time, the data should be available in SAP. If that is a yes, you can go for sales as per receipts. Or you might feel like, no, uh, all these kind of conflicts or validations or audits, I will manage in the POS level itself. I need not send those data to SAP, but all I want to be updated in SAP is like, okay, on this particular day, in this particular POS, this material has been sold this many quantities, and the overall value of the transaction that I have received out of these transactions is so and so. I want to update only these values, then you can use the aggregated sales functionality. Okay. So let me say that I want to use for this customer, I mean, uh, test this functionality for this customer W102. To something we had in taken. Sales as per receipts. Okay. So what is the currency and what is the the reference number, POS controller, terminal number, cashier. This has to be your login user. Sometimes the validation happens and it says like uh, user not found kind of. Okay, so this based on the user that is available in this SAP system in which we are testing this. Partner number W102. Okay. This is a qualifier. This is not a, what to say, serial number. Item number 1, 2, 3. Not that kind of serial number. It's a qualifier. Okay. We use qualifier 006 for materials. And uh, let me say like I am posting this material. Uh, 10 pieces. And I had sold those 10 pieces for 30 euros. Okay. So before I post this transaction, let me check whether this stock is available, enough stock is available in this plant. Else what will happen is, as far as, I mean, you may say like the material has been sold, but there is no stock. The system will say like, okay, there is no stock. How could the transaction might have happened? Okay, then it will not allow you to create an application document. Okay, so that is a workaround. Like if you had enabled the negative stocks, in the material master, you can do that. But still, let us go with the positive test case tomorrow first. So it is MMBE. So this is the material 1024. What is the stock available right now? No stock. So let me add some material, MB1C. Added the stock. Let me check whether the stock has been updated. MMBE 1024. We have 100 units. Okay. I come to this 100 pieces out of this. Okay. I'm saying that today I had sent 10 pieces of this material for 30 um, euros during this transaction. Okay. And then let me see. I have to add the payment method. Use this payment method, PTC that and thirty dollars. This is for the 
by using the visa card euro and Save it. So ideally, it should create a IDOC, and the IDOC should be processed. It has created an IDOC 259257. This IDOC should be processed, and if all goes well, you should have created a uh, billing document, a material document for the movement of these uh, 10 pieces. Okay. So let me see what is IDOC status. I can click there itself. Application document posted. Okay, I can go to this POS monitor directly from here itself. I can either go through this way or there is a separate transaction called WPER. Okay, so let us click this here. And I notice that it has successfully, it has created an article document and a billing document. I will be able to see this article document in the transaction code MB02. So it says 10 pieces of this material using the movement type 251 and it has 251. What does it say? Goods issued for sales have been issued for sales and this has reduced my stock quantity, so that is why it is minus. Okay. Similarly, I will be able to see the billing document 9073 is the billing document. So, it is an invoice. So, I can see that in the transaction code VS02 So, it has created this billing document and it has posted to this account. Yes. So, it is posted to this account by getting into domestic sales and the revenues. Okay. So, this simulation is successful. Now, let me check the stock. Yes. The 10 pieces have been issued as per. Okay. So, this is what happens. So, morning when you start my day, the day, I mean, that it had 100 pieces. Okay. So, over a period of time, the transactions are continued in the POS system, not SAP. Okay. So, because of the activities not happening in SAP, there won't be any update in the inventory or the stock. Okay. At the end of the day, the POS sends all the data back to SAP saying that, hey, today I have sent this material uh, for this much value and other thing. Okay. Since the, as per the store, the material had gone out, okay, so they have been issued to the customer. So, obviously, it should reduce our existing stock. Okay, so that is what it has happened, okay. So, this test is successful. Similarly, we can see the aggregated sales. So, the same customer will use the same customer, same material. Okay. Currency qualifier is zero zero six. The same material twenty five pieces seventy five euros. Okay. So what is the difference between the previous transaction and this transaction? There you had the reference number. You had the details like in which POS terminal the transaction was carried on and who was the cashier responsible for the transaction. All the data is not there, but here there is nothing. So, I am just saying that this day 
this store had sold 25 pieces of this material for 75 euros. It has set the night out. Application document poster. I go to the monitor. I could see what is my MB02. I think change the article document is that. So, 10 has gone. Okay. Please look at this. This my, this got my attention. Okay. So, what does it contain? In the previous one, we will see for six. Let us see how it's got then generated. It's okay. So, we'll come to the billing. Seventy four is what now has been created. Yes. Sold for twenty five pieces. Okay. Let me go to the stock. Stock for you. So ninety minus twenty five sixty five. Yes. So this is how you can simulate the sales activity which is supposed to have come from the TOS at the end of the day or end of the shift kind of. Okay. So we will see the next scenario. Customer one zero two. Let us use this customer today. This is the transaction type, and it is created by this user. Ideally, you should. You are saying that this is my sale, okay? And I am posting this much of amount to. This account directly. That's it. That's what you are trying to say. Here, you are not mentioning anything about the what you had. Uh, what to say? You are not mentioning anything about what made you to create the billing document. Okay, or what made you to create the accounting document. You are not saying anything. Here. You are just saying like, okay, today something happened. I collected forty euros. Post that into this. Accounting object. Okay, so I, I am not sure like parameters for this type missing. Okay, let us try for the other side before we start debugging why it didn't work out. Parameters for this site. Okay, no problem. So let me fix it and we will revisit this scenario again. Let us ignore this as of now. Let us see the good moment. Okay. So for this reference transaction so and so article number for this transaction reference item number ten. Item number ten is nothing but the your lines one, two, three, similarly ten, twenty and thirty. And for this qualifier So 
So this is the moment time. This much quantity. And uh, what is there in your delivery note? What is the sales value? Basic unit of unit of measure in oh, sorry. Interface profile for the moment at three twenty one not exist. So I changed the a moment type to 301 which is application document poster so this is the IDA that has been created and that has created this article document and we will see what is there in that article document ok so moment type 301 it has balanced with the plus and minus. Okay, and we will see the start if there is any change because of this. No, it has just posted the moment with the plus and minus. So because of it, there is no change in your stock value. Not not stock value, stock quantity. Okay. Now the system said that moment type three to one was not found. Okay, so that is the reason I changed to 301. Okay, so where does this, why does the system say 321 is not found, uh, but it works fine with 301? So, where we have given that data that if it contains 301, then process. Okay, so this is everything that is contained. These things are controlled by the inbound profile and outbound profile that you assign in the store uh, sites basically. Okay, we will see more of that. And before that we will see the other scenario also. Stop store order. Of document type request 02. I am saying this is a stock requiring. I want the material to be bought from this vendor and delivered to this PC which I can track using 001 ok and I want to use the document type UB for stock transfer order and this purchase organization is responsible for my goods movement ok and I want this material this many pieces Okay, so I believe that I had entered all the values. Then I create store order. System carries out an availability check and says inbound IDA has been saved. So what is the status of that IDA? It says stock transport order created under the number 450 Okay, we will see what is there in that stock transport order. Stock transport order is nothing but another form of Purchase order. So, yeah, ME two two M. Control B. So now you could see the store W delivery address or. I just want to see that site number. Go 
That's okay. Thank you. I'm glad it's okay. So where is my site? It will work back down. 102. Okay. So now, yeah, STO has been created from 102, requesting for 10 pieces of this material, 10042, and they had requested this to the DC W001 to send the material on 10th of March. Okay. And this is their requirement number, which is generated from the POS. So this is what tomorrow if you want to check the status of your request in POS. So this is the link between the SAP STO and the POS requirement number. Physical inventory, no, uh, I hadn't tried this because, uh, but as far as I know, this is about the store storage location. When you already have a physical inventory done, you want to, and it is of certain value, and then you want to revaluate it based on your new sales price, then this can be done. Okay, but I hadn't done neither the physical inventory nor the sales price change of the existing stock, so I am not in a position to simulate this scenario. Let us try this last scenario. Article master, change flag, modify. Okay. Uh, what is that? Actually, once you enter all the data and save it, you see the application document not posted. Why it is not posted? W one zero two. Add up with error. Let me look into that. I'll take the number from the material master. Work items created for this side of it means, right? The system is, okay, so the background job to modify this article 10024 has been created. Okay, so this is uh, how you normally process the master data changes from the PYS system into the SAP system. So we hadn't we had issues with the financial transactions and we hadn't tried this at all store inventory. So okay, out of six we had seen the four. Okay, I will see what 
is the proper master data. I don't think there is any issue with the configuration that the issue will be with the master data because I might not have uh, entered the proper account number. Uh, okay. okay, so this I will see. Okay, so this is how we normally simulate the transactions that come from the POS system. Okay. For this to happen, we should have maintained the outbound profile and inbound profile in the site master. If you go to the site master, in the POS tab, you have the outbound profile and the inbound profile. Okay. So this is where all the control lies in. Okay. If it is not properly maintained, then we will not be able to carry out any whatever else. We will not be able to carry out any simulation or even the outbound triggering also. Okay. So you will see the configurations of uh, what are I mean like uh, configurations involved in the outbound profile and the inbound profile in the next video.